Okay. Um, oops, yeah. All right, let's see. I just ran a 20-minute flat 5K. Now I can't see because there's sweat in my eyes. Um, and I'm going to drink this uh, 2019 Cepa Bianco from Danilo Marcucci uh, from Cepaiolo. Uh, Piccolo Poderi Cepaiolo. Um, let me see if I remember the grapes in this. This is Malvasia, Trubiano, San Colombano, and Uva Pecora. Um, old vines, uh, hand harvested, obvi, uh, aged on the skin, or spends 10 days on the skins, um, fermented and aged in, uh, you know, neutral fiberglass, like epoxy resin tank. Um, and Danilo made 1,800 bottles of it. So I don't know what that works out to, like 160 cases. So uh, not something you're likely to see around very often. Uh, fun note here, this pig on the label, Danilo drew that label. That is a definitely a Danilo original drawing. Um, that pig, the pig's name is Paolo. Paolo uh, was a uh, quote unquote pet of Danilo's uh, a bunch of years ago, um, who, uh, who followed Danilo all around when he was out working in the vineyards and stuff like that. And, um, and then made a really uh, wonderful, lo lovely, uh, touching contribution uh, to the dinner table uh, that that autumn. This is 11 and percent alcohol, uh, natural yeast, of course, obviously. Um, Cepaiolo, so Danilo Marcucci makes wine a lot of places. Conestable del Staffa, consults with a lot of different people. Um, everything he makes is very, very natural. Zero additives, zero sulfur, nothing at all added or taken away. Cepaiolo Piccolo Poderi del Cepaiolo uh, in Bastia, in Umbria. Um, it's a tiny little vineyard and winery. It's, the winery is like a falling down, literally falling down, uh, like cement brick building. Uh, and there's a few acres of vines here. And Danilo uses it. It belongs to his friend Ricardo, who has a restaurant next door. Um, but Ricardo, like, is not a winemaker. I think it just he inherited it and, like, he doesn't want anything to do with it. He doesn't have time. So it's like, it's Danilo's test kitchen where he can like try out crazy techniques. Like he's been collecting cuttings from different heritage, like forgotten grape varieties that he has found around central Italy. He'll t try to figure out what they are and then take cuttings if it's something interesting and graft it over here at Cepaiolo. So it's like a bank of forgotten grape varieties, you know, to like provide other um, genetic material and stock for whatever happens in the future. Uh, I don't even know where was I going with this. So uh, yeah, he makes very unusual, interesting wines here. And they're generally just, they're different every year because he's trying out different things here and learning. Oh, right. This is so fitting that I'm here covered in drenched in sweat drinking this wine. It was on this day, the 5th of October, three years ago that Danilo and I ran 25 odd miles from Conestable del Staffa around through the hills, back and forth, and then to uh, Tiberi, um, another local winery. And uh, it almost killed us. It was very hot and we did not really bring water. And Danilo was wearing like cycling pants, like thermal pants. <laughs> and it worked, I don't know. I mean, it didn't seem to slow him down. Uh, and we got there and we drank a lot of wine and then we rode in the back of a Fiat mini truck and it was very memorable and great. Anyway, um, it smells honeyed. It smells like really like the best, most delicious ripe melon ever in the history of the world is what this smells like to me. Also a little bit spicy, a little bit like, like baked apple crisp. Like sp like cinnamon, like baking spices, uh, cardamom, a little bit, little teeny bit. Smells great. I'm just I don't know. Hopefully you can see this. You're getting the sun in it, like the light, the color of it there. 
It looks pretty lovely. It's not cloudy. It's not like weird. There aren't like things floating in it. Just sort of golden, almost amber. Mm -mm -mm. And wow, it's delicious, thirst quenching. Um, for 11.5% alcohol, like 11.5% alcohol, you would think, okay, going to be a very light wine because the grapes weren't that ripe. And you would be wrong um, because this is not a particularly light wine. It's not a heavy wine at all, but there's a lot of flavor here. There's a lot of minerality. There's a lot of salt that comes in in the mid palate. It's a very like mouth filling, like exciting, tingly wine on your palate. It opens with like very smooth, like round fruit, like kind of like very light orange, like light dry orange and more of that sort of like ripe honeydew melon. Um, but then you get this real like salty, savory, like like uh, crunchy sort of sort of taste and, and textural thing on the mid palate. which really lasts through the finish. And then you get a little bit more like apple. Oh, it reminds me of some heritage varieties of apple that I've had that are more like spicy and snappy and stuff to them. That's what that flavor reminds me of in the very finish of this. Like not, it's not cidery. I would not call this cidery, but it's apple-y. It tastes like, it, like, not like modern sweet eating apples, but like, like old spicy baking apples. Like, that's what this tastes like. Or at least that component on the finish of it anyway. Um, there's probably like wine, there's probably like clouds of wine and um, sweat coming from my mouth and mustache right now. I hope that's Real attractive. Mm. And there's, it has tannin, but I'm actually really only noticing it now at this point after all those mouthfuls of wine because the salt and the fruit are so expressive that like, yes, there is this little bit of tannin there but it's not out of place at all in the wine. It just, you know, adds this extra dimension to the finish um, and draws out the finish and is awesome. Jeez, uh, what else do I want to say about this? For like 160, only 160 cases made, this is really, really excellent and delicious. Um, oh, right, also, I opened this yesterday. I opened this last night and there's only that much left. And seriously, it hasn't really changed since yesterday. Like it has not fall, fallen apart at all. It's not oxidative. There's no nuts, no peanut. Like it's not mousy at all. Like this is very clean, very stable, really, really well-made wine. Like this, you know, you wouldn't, if you just open a bottle of this and drink it, which why wouldn't you just drink it and finish it? Ugh, hate cars that are loud, but actually slow, which is what that sounds like. Um, you would never notice that. Like, that's not an obvious, you know, thing that you, you taste in the wine. It's, it's just, it's uh, a testament to what a talented, it's not even talent, uh, thorough, experienced uh, winemaker who has educated himself very thoroughly. That's what Danilo is. Passionate and somebody who has just done a god-awful amount of research and learning by doing to be able to make wines like this without any filtration or fining or sulfur or anything and have them be this complex and delicious and stable and integrated and complete. So this is fantastic. Chapa Bianco, 2019, uh, lovely. And I wish I was uh, still running around the hills of Umbria drinking wine in the sun, being dehydrated.